Hello, welcome to week two, unit four, iterating using the for loop. In this week, we will learn how we can access a list of elements and work with each individual element. As an example, consider the real life. In real life, you often have collection of objects. For example, you have a group of students or a pile of books. There are certain operations you can't do with the whole group. For example, it's impossible to read a whole pile of books. You have to read each book individually. In order to access each individual element of a group or list or a sequence, a new control structure is required. This control structure in Python or in programming is called a loop. And in Python, we have two kinds of loops. There is a for loop and the while loop. In this unit, we will introduce you to the for loop. So as always, it's showtime. Let's head over to our Jupyter Notebooks and have a look what the for loop looks like. So let's start with the basic syntax of the for loop. The basic syntax of the for loop is shown up here. The for loop consists of a keyword for followed by a sequence variable, the keyword in, and a sequence. The whole statement ends with a colon. And then, similar to, for example, the if-else statement, there is a set of statements that are executed for each element in the sequence. So, what does this syntax actually mean? I try to depict this using um, a small graphics. So think of this graphic down here as the process representation of what's happening with the for loop up here. So when the for loop is executed in Python, no, the execution starts and the first thing that's happening is it's checked if the sequence contains additional elements. If this is the case, the next element in the sequence is assigned to the sequence variable, and the block of statements is executed with this sequence variable. And once the block is finished, now we continue to here and check again if sequence contains more elements. So the loop continues to execute all the statements with the different elements of the sequence as long as there are further elements. As soon as this check here fails, as soon as the sequence doesn't contain any more elements, the execution of the loop ends and the program continues with the first statement after the loop. So <clears throat> let's have a look at an example. In the first example, we will use a string as a sequence. So the first example is this one here. What this for loop does for the keyword, every character in a sequence, and in this case, the sequence is a string, we simply print the individual characters. Let's execute this. And you see, as expected, we get Hello Python programming, um, just not written in one line, but each letter separately in one line. Let's try another example. Instead of iterating through a string, we now iterate using the for loop through a list. Here's a list, an example list. The list contains a few elements, a few integers, a string, and a Boolean value. And again, we can use the for loop to work with every element in this list. And how do we do this? The keyword for followed by a sequence variable. I called it element. So for every element inside our list, we want to do something. Again, I just print the element of the list. Let's execute this as well. And again, we get one line with each element of our list as a result. Let's have a look at another example. So what could we do with a for loop? 
We could, for example, try to find the smallest or the biggest element in a list. In reality, Python has a function called min, which can be used to find the minimum element in a list of numbers. And it also has a function called max that can be used to find the maximum element in a list of numbers. Nevertheless, we try to build this functionality now ourselves using the for loop we've just learned about. But important, keep in mind, if you ever want to do something like this in a real program, you should better use the min or max function from the Python standard library. But let's build this functionality ourselves using the for loop we just learned about. Why are we doing that? It shows us some important patterns we always have when working with loops. So let's start. First, in this little program, I have again an example list. And this example list contains a few numbers. Yeah? In this example list, you are easily able to spot the minimum element right here because it's the only uh, number containing just two digits, all the other are three digit numbers. Nevertheless, let's try to write a program that finds the minimum element in this list using the for loop. How do we do this? First, we need a helper variable. The helper variable will contain the minimum element. I call this helper current minimum and as long as we don't know anything else, I just assume the minimum element in our list is the first element. So this is true unless I check the rest of the list and that's exactly what we do next. So using the for loop, I now check every element of the list. And how is this done? For every number in this list, I do the following. I compare the current number with the current minimum number. And if the current number, so our sequence variable up here, is lower than the current minimum, we know we have a number that is smaller than the number we currently have as our minimum. So we assign the current minimum the new number, so we have the new minimum value. And once we leave this for loop, we know that we checked each and every number if it's smaller than the current minimal number. And therefore, the result is clear. The current minimum, this helper variable, contains the minimum value of this list. So let's give this a try. I execute the program. And sure enough, we get, as a result, the minimum value in this list is 68. What you've seen with this example is a common approach of defining a helper variable, then working through all the elements of a sequence using a for loop, and after the loop, do something with the helper variable. Um, therefore, we calculated the minimum using this approach. In reality, just to stress this again, you should, of course, always use the min and max function from the Python standard library. And just that you have seen this once, um, I'll print simply the min using the minimum uh, function from the Python standard library as well. And as you will see, as expected, we also receive the 68 as a result. So now it's your turn to practice using the for loop. Therefore, we have a small exercise. Your task in this exercise is to write the following program. Your program should ask the user for a sentence. Next, your program should ask the user for a letter. And finally, your program should print the initial sentence, but without the letter the user entered. So as an example, have a look here at, at our exercise. If I enter, for example, the sentence, this is how it should look like, and I want to remove the letter I from it, then the result should be you know, whatever is written down here, which obviously I can't pronounce because it's missing the I. We have a few hints for you. 
Um, you know that you can get an input from the user using the input function. Um, you again will need some kind of helper. We recommend using the result as a helper variable and initializing it with an empty string. And next, you need to iterate over the input of the user letter by letter and check if the letter is equal or not to the letter that needs to be deleted. If the letter is equal to the letter that needs to be deleted, you do nothing. If it's differently from the letter that needs to be deleted, you append the current letter to the result. And in the end of the for loop, you will have you know, the, the initial sentence, but with the letter the user entered removed. So now it's your turn. Pause the video as always and try to solve this exercise yourself. So welcome back. I will show you one possible solution of this exercise. And as always, this is just one possible solution. If your solution looks differently, it doesn't mean it's incorrect. There are several approaches to solve this exercise. So what do I need to do to solve this exercise? First, I need to ask the user for some input. So I will get a sentence from the user. Um, and I use the input function for this. And I just copy the text from up here, which reads, what sentence should be the output? Next, I need to get the letter from the user um, that is to be removed. I call this variable the unwanted letter. Again, we need an input function for that. Which letter should be removed? Now I have the input I need and now the actual work needs to be done and therefore we will use the for loop. But before we use the for loop, we create a helper. The result is an empty string. And now we work through every letter in our initial sentence for every character in the sentence. We do the following. If our current character is equal to the unwanted, uh, let's better call this character so that we are a little bit more in sync here. So we have a character and an unwanted character. So if our current character is equal to the unwanted character, we do nothing and else, else we append the current letter to the result. And we use the plus equals statement for that. Um, what I did here, I, I put the three dots here um, just to show you that there might be a possibility to optimize this program. If I don't need to do something for this if statement, I can change the check here to get rid of the if statement and basically to collapse the if and the else statement into just one statement. And that's what I will be doing now. If our current letter is not equal to the unwanted letter, we just append it. If it's equal, we do nothing. So therefore, I use the unequal comparison to you know, see what to do with the current letter. And now we know after the for loop that the result just contains the input sentence, but without the unwanted letter. So what we can do as a result, we just can print the result um, as a result of the program. So now let's give this a try. Hello, Python programming is a sentence. Which letter should be removed? Let's remove the capital P. And as you see, the result now is hello, Python programming, except the capital P. Let's check our little program again. This time I'm using the input from the exercise, just to be sure everything works correctly. 
um, we want to remove the letter I from this. And again, you see the result we get from our program, and it seems to solve the exercise correctly. Let's jump back to our slides. What have you learned in this unit? In this unit, you have learned about the for loop. You have seen how you can use the for loop to iterate through all the elements of a list or through all the characters of a string. Actually, you can use the for loop to iterate through the elements of a general sequence, and we will learn about more about sequences in the reminder of this week. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again in one of the upcoming units.